Uh, I want to talk about something that should seem very easy, but for a lot of people, it's difficult. And for guys, sometimes it can be even more so. Uh, but it's listen more than you speak. Uh, I heard the old county preacher say one time, you know, God gave you two ears and a mouth, and you should use them appropriately or proportionally. Uh, I don't know how he learned the word proportionally, but he, he'd read it somewhere and someone taught him how to say it and use it, right? But that's true. Uh, you have two ears and you should listen more than you speak. You, it, It's hard because they teach you when you're in a conversation with someone, um, you know, most people want to talk about themselves. So uh, you could be a phenomenal conversationalist by just saying, so tell me a little bit about yourself and just shutting up and letting them talk, you know? That's that's the way human nature is. So that being said, when you're uh, when you're in a relationship, one of the best things you could do to insulate that relationship from failure is to listen more. Uh, I struggle with that sometimes. A lot of times, I'm spending a lot of time in my head uh, thinking about stuff, or you know, tearing things apart, like this whole technology thing. Uh, this morning, I'll be ruminating on that the rest of the day. I've got some other issues that I'm trying to process through. Uh, so I, I spend a lot of time quiet thinking. I spend a lot of time alone, uh, and I choose that. Uh, you know, I work from home. Uh, sometimes I go to Starbucks, but I, I have no problem being that way. I, I, you know, part of that comes from being a uh, being an introvert. But listening is a skill, uh, and you have to work on it. And there's a lot of different things that we can talk about specifically geared towards listening, but today we're going to highlight what active listening entails. Active listening is the process where you are engaged with the other person, you're acknowledging the things that the other person is saying, and that person knows that you are uh, engaged to a higher degree in your conversation. You're actively listening. If you find yourself thinking that you and your partner have communication problems and you aren't quite sure about how to fix them, uh, the one thing that you should know is that practicing active listening can greatly improve how you communicate and will ultimately, ultimately it will help your relationship. So the first thing is, listening is a relationship skill most of us have not yet learned. Active listening is, if practiced and mastered, the best gift that you can give your partner. So guys especially on today valentine's day we always try to do these grandiose gestures and i'm guilty of that as well i'm a dude i get it uh, we always want to do these grandiose gestures and we want to we want to go out and we want to spend uh, a lot of money or we want to get the biggest steak dinner and all that stuff and, and honestly m most of the time uh the the people in our lives that care about us most don't really I mean, those things are nice, but that's not really what they want. I think Sarah would probably give anything for me just to listen sometimes when she's talking. Sometimes I'm not uh, always there when I'm there. Uh, so listening is, is something that we all need to work on. Listening is an activity where you're not just uh, waiting for your turn to speak. This kind of listening means you are concentrating on uh, and making an effort to understand your partner's point of view and how they are thinking and feeling. So. That type of listening, that active listening, is focusing on the other person and focusing on their needs, focusing on their emotions, focusing on uh, the things they're saying and trying to figure out what that means for you. That active listening is not listening to the other person and waiting for your time to, to put your shot in. Uh, it's not uh, waiting for the person to stop talking so that you can start talking. Uh, when you're active listening, there's there's usually uh, a a little bit of dead air, and it's uncomfortable until you get used to it, because you're not going to be immediately throwing out ideas. You're you're going to be sitting thinking about it for a second, and usually you should take that time to think about the words that you say. You should always process through what you're about to say in the best way possible, especially if you're in a very tense situation. Uh, Listening is an emotional skill that's a lot harder than engaging in counter complaints uh, when your partner uh, shares their list with you. That's the best. Uh, uh, one person's best advice is to be aware of your best intentions and why the relationship is important to you. So if you're keeping at the forefront of your mind what your intentions are, what your uh, 
best intentions are for the relationship and why you love that person. Having difficult conversations will be easier because when someone gives you an onslaught of um, the the list of things that they finally got to the, to the end of um, and they've blown up and they're blowing it all up in your face, very difficult to just sit and take it. Uh, trust me, I know. Um, and I've done it, unfortunately. So uh, be aware of why you've done the things you've done, but also be cognizant of the relationship. Keep keep the other person at the forefront of your mind. That'll keep you from saying something very stupid uh, or uh, threatening to the relationship. Uh, next up is listening shows that you're engaged and interested in what your partner has to say. That would seem to be a given, but some people need to be reminded, so I'm putting it on the list. Uh, when you are uh, talking to someone and you are in a conversation and they say something and you go, oh, hmm, I've never thought about that. Or you, you make these comments along the way where you're, where you're showing that you're engaged in what they're having to say. My problem is, is I have the rut if I say the same thing all the time. Uh, it drives my wife crazy. I say, right. Uh, it's something I picked up. Maybe because I'm from the South, but she'll say something like, uh, you know, did you know that so and so said, right? And she'll be like, oh, so you knew that? No, I'm just, I was just agreeing with you. And it, it's the funny little, it's a little colloquialism, collo colloquialism that I picked up that uh, I, I need to break myself up because it's, it's giving the wrong message. So anyway, uh, but, but being engaged with somebody is, you know, acknowledging their feelings, you know, acknowledging maybe you haven't thought about that in that way before. Uh, that shows that you're engaged. That shows that you're very interested in what the other person is saying. Listening also tells paying attention to your own and your partner's body language. Eye contact is incredibly important to show that you care. Reading your partner's body language can give you clues as to how she, he or she feels. We've all been there. Uh, you've been in the conversation and the person just sitting there doing this. You know you're in trouble. You know, um, listening, being aware of your body language, trying to keep a relaxed, open uh, stance with your body is is the best advice you uh, you can get. When, when you're dealing with someone, especially someone who has self-esteem issues, and you get into a tense conversation, watch what happens. Uh, they ball up. Uh, meaning they, they crunch themselves into the tiniest little ball they can to, be, to make themselves as small as possible so um, so that they can they can take the hit with as least body damage as possible. That's kind of how they're subconsciously thinking. So just be aware of body language. If you, if you ever want to, to do um, a fascinating study, do some research on body language. Uh, watch some YouTube videos. There's a bunch of professional... Um, I don't know the, the scientific term, but they're body language experts and they can they can do uh, studies on the micro emotions, the micro aggressions, the little, the little things that the face says, and they can read a whole lot more about people than you could ever imagine. It's fascinating. It truly is fascinating. So if you can pick up on some of that and apply that to your own life, uh, I think your relationships will probably be a little bit better. Uh, Eye contact. I forgot to talk about eye contact. Eye contact is huge. Uh, if you're not making eye contact with the person, uh, that gives a, a little subtle message that you a may not care about the person, b that you uh, are not considering yourself equal to the person, and you may be hiding something. That's always a big thing. Um, listening shows that you can manage your emotions uh, and wait for your turn. We're back in in a uh, in kindergarten. Uh, patience, calming yourself by reminding yourself that this is more about the other person than you. This is the ultimate gift that you can give your partner when they are feeling distressed. Uh, this should be combined with eye contact to show your partner that uh, their opinions and emotions are important to you as well. It just goes right back to talk about uh, what I said yesterday. Be patient, uh, show that you are keeping everything in check, and just make eye contact and be friggin' calm. Uh, and that's incredibly hard to do. That is a skill. Um, but, you know, there's there's times when it, it doesn't work. I understand that. Uh, asking, qu asking questions is a better listening tool 
uh, than expecting what you think about your partner's problem. A good listener knows the value of asking uh, clarifying questions that's helping your partner talk more about uh, his or her problems. So this is one of the things that Sarah's taught me a lot about. She asked a ton of questions. Uh, it used to drive me crazy, all the questions that she would ask, but then I figured out that you know, she's, she's really asking clarifying questions. And she usually is very engaged in, um, in what we're talking about. Uh, till the advent of Facebook and TV, both of us had a <laughs> had better conversations. But <clears throat> between the two of us, excuse me, sometimes I think that the uh, the distraction gets in the way, uh, and that's true. So making sure that when you're in a conversation, ask questions for clarification. It's also a subtle indication that you're engaged and you're interested in what they're talking about. And finally, giving a summary or a recap of what your partner just said is an excellent way. Uh, to show your genuine feelings and understand uh, your partner's point of view. Make sure that, uh, especially if they're going down a, a list of things that they're struggling with with you, that you recap it and make sure that you understood what they say. Uh, you'll find some subtle differences, especially in your communication techniques, uh, that will bring some enlightenment to, uh, to through the party, and that usually helps you uh, diffuse a lot of situations. It doesn't necessarily make all the heat go away, but it certainly does make the road to recovery that much quicker. So I hope that this helps. Uh, if you've got questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comment section. Uh, you can always find me at johncdonahue.com. You can find me over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all at John C. Donahue. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, you get the Coffee Break notes. There's more notes than what I usually say. Uh, you can find that at patreon.com slash John C. Donahue. You can sign up to be a patron. So with that being said, guys, I raise my coffee mug to you in a Valentine's Day wish of love, happiness, and awesomeness. So I hope you guys enjoy your day. I hope you guys are uh, going to spend some time with someone that you care about, whether it's romantic, friendship, or just uh, a, a family member. And you know what? I hope you guys just flat out choose to be awesome because when you choose to be awesome, he truly will be. I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning for another coffee break.